Welcome to the ATP Project. You're with your hosts, Jeff and Steve. G'day, mate. How are you? Good. I hear that you have a breakthrough, Steve. New science talking about something that people may think that they know what they're talking about, but yes, they don't. They don't. Which is diabetes. Yes. Now, we had diabetes type 1. 1, yep. right? Which typically you were born with. Born with, yep. yep. 5% that, of people that are diabetics have that. And, and, and that is that they don't produce enough insulin? You have little to none. Right. And, and then they inject it. Type yes. 2, yeah. typically, uh, or late onset diabetes. Used to be oh, called yeah, adult yeah, onset, yeah. yeah. Um, is, is typically, you know, around lifestyle choices, poor diet, poor physical activity. And this is where the cells become sticky. The insulin doesn't mm. really get the sugar inside the cells. Correct, yeah. And so then people get type 2 diabetes. Yeah. Then lastly, there's Type three. Now, three. Matt and I, and Matt's the sound yeah, guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, we, you, you mentioned it in the yeah. podcast and we're like, has, has Steve lost his mind? <laughs> um, but you were right. That, and, and it, Well, yeah. uh, surprisingly, Steve. I know. It, was, it, was, um, it happens once a year. Yeah. <laughs> You're like a clock, right? You're right twice, twice a Correct, time. Correct. Um, <laughs> but I think in terms of um, what is type three, three diabetes, because this is something different. And when was it discovered and who discovered it? And tell us more, Steve. Oh, very interesting. Well, well it's been around forever, okay? Right. But it's been coined the phrase type 3 diabetes because it's basically insulin resistance that affects the brain. Right. So, so it's, it's so, so, so does, does sugar, I mean, sugar in the brain helps with energy levels and yep. thought process. And, yep. you know, I, I had a friend of mine that used to always have a sugary drink and I'm like, why are you drinking that? And he goes, oh, because it, it helps me to study and it helps yeah. me to stay alert. It does. Right. It does. It, it, sugar, uh, the number one fuel for the brain is sugars. Now it can feed off ketones as well. And we've spoken a lot about that, how it's actually superior, but yeah. a little bit more difficult in lifestyle to actually yeah. manage that. So your blood sugar levels typically are around, if you're healthy, four to six, yep. you know, around there. Right. If it gets above that, we, we call that diabetes mm -hmm. and, you know, type one or type two, it's usually type two. That's the most common type. Now, there are two other types you didn't mention. There's diabetes insipidus, just to be clear. Okay. Does everyone, that, that's, not, that's not a sugary thing. That, that's a lack of antidiuretic hormone in your brain. Right. So you just pee a lot. You, right. And so you drink, you're always thirsty, and mm. you're peeing a lot. Because mm. antidiuretic hormone, as the name would suggest, stops the diuresis. You know, oh. so... I wonder if that's what my, my dog, and for people that haven't seen it, Matt, you can throw it up on the screen now, a picture of Biscuit. Tony and I laugh that he's all bladder because seriously, <sighs> he's a little dog. Yeah. But he can hold his pee like the best of him. And, but when he goes, literally I'm expecting Noah's flood because he just <laughs> sits there. He doesn't lift his legs too little. No, I know. Leg, and he just he just stretches himself out. Yeah. It's, pro it's pretty cute. I've seen him. I've, I've taken him to the toilet. Yeah. It's cute. I and mean, he's, he's got a long body, so there's plenty does. of room for bladder. It, 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 yeah. Tony quite, doesn't listen to this, does she? Yes, she does. Oh. Yeah, but it's, it's, quite, uh, it's, it's quite phenomenal. Anyway, so, okay, so and, and there's another type of diabetes as well. Gestational too. diabetes. Right, yes, yes. Yeah, and, so, that's, and that's around pregnancy, of course. It is, yeah. yeah. The, the placenta produces a hormone. Do you agree with the sugar test that the doctors make you do, Steve? Is well, it necessary? Um, yes and no. I okay. mean, the sugar test that they do is they get you to drink 75 grams of glucose yep. and they measure their insulin every usually half an hour yep. and sugar levels. And they're supposed to go up and down together. But if you're insulin resistant, the sugar goes up and down, but the insulin spikes a hell of a lot higher. And that's a good test for insulin resistance. Do you need it? Sometimes, but I think it's overused. I oh, Tony hated it, man. Mm. I think in her last pregnancy, and, mm. you know, I don't think she skipped it. But um, anyway, yeah. yeah. I mean, if you're lean and healthy and exercising, there are risk factors for gestational diabetes. What are they? Uh, being over the age of 40 or right. over the age of 35, depending on the study you read. Yeah. It just, you know, the risk of pregnancy goes up as you get older. Yes. Now, 40 seems to be the, the magic cutoff point in the literature. Um, you've, you've got this thing called anti mullerian hormone. Which is Mullerin. Yeah, Mullerin hormone, which is the... the German guy? <laughs> yeah, it was actually. Yeah, yeah, sounds like it. Yeah, yeah. Um, so you, you, you can measure that and that's the, your organ reserves uh, of, of eggs. And normally after 40, that drops below one, which means that you're technically becoming infertile. Oh. You're not infertile, right? but you're getting there. Right. And then you go into perimenopause and we've talked about that. Uh. All that sort of fun stuff. Oh, my friends are uh, dead. No, actually, that oh. reminds me of a. Um, <laughs> remember, well, my friends are getting married. Oh, oh wow. it, you know the song. Um, yeah, it's it's funny actually. There's those seventies album covers. I love it. And this guy, and he's sitting there, and he's looking into the camera. And it's all my friends are dead. It's like, well, <laughs> that's a joyous album. I wouldn't mind getting that one. Uh, um, <laughs> if you can throw it up on the screen, Matt. Yeah, uh, YouTube watchers, we'll have to see if we can find that one. Um, <clears throat> but I think in terms of. Um, 
Uh, um, yeah, that perimenopause is a pain in the pain in the butt. Yeah. And, and all my friends are going through it at the moment, yep. or a lot of them are starting they because are. they're getting older, Steve. Yep. Um, anyway, getting back to diabetes. So, so, so anyway, what happens with the gestation? I just finish it off. Uh, after about halfway through your pregnancy at week twenty, your your placenta starts producing hormones, things like cortisol, progesterone, estrogen, all this sort of stuff, and also human placental lactogen, and that actually stifles insulin secretion. All right. So let's say you're a woman, and I'll and I'll I'll, I'll paint a back to you that you're slightly overweight, or you've got PCOS, mm-hmm. or you're slightly old, your late thirties, mm-hmm. um, and you're not a big exerciser, mm-hmm. and you're not exercising during pregnancy, mm-hmm. then that's a very high risk of developing gestational diabetes, mm-hmm. because uh, you've got this other thing counting against you, not just your age or weight or any of this stuff. So, so that really slows you down. So it's a much higher risk of it. Mm. But but diabetes, um, so there's five types. Yeah. So we've got the type one you mentioned, type yeah. two is the most common one you see, lifestyle related, used to be called adult onset. Everyone, all my friends are getting diabetes now. Mm-hmm. Um, and then you've got gestational and diabetes insipidus. But then you've got type three okay. diabetes. So this is interesting, Steve. So who, who, who coined the phrase do- type, type three, three and, and, and when was it discovered and what does it do? It was first published in 08. So it's a relatively recent um, coin, and, and they coined it because uh, type three diabetes is actually type two diabetes, and how it affects the brain specifically, and more specifically, how it can cause Alzheimer's disease, which is very interesting, because right up until this point, Alzheimer's disease, there's no treatment, but what if it's caused by type two diabetes, and you can treat type two diabetes? then all of a sudden, for some Alzheimer's patients, there may be a treatment. So is it like a form of insulin into the brain cells? Insulin resistance. And, and they, they, they share the exact same pathology, type oh. 3 diabetes and type 2 diabetes in the brain. Now, there's a paper here published. I'll, I'll, I'll refer to the first one. I'll read the title of it for those people listening. It's called, surprisingly enough, Type 3 Diabetes and its Role uh, Implications in Alzheimer's Disease. Wow. Now, so from that paper, there's a great diagram here, which I'll put up on the screen. So if you're watching, look at the screen and you'll see, uh, for those who are listening, a, a rather obese, looks like a man, but you don't know these days. No. I don't want to assume. We don't want to judge. And it's got the title there, Diabetic Brain. And you can see they're very, very well linked. Type 3 diabetes is when your um, lack of exercise, your age, the type of food you eat, and all this sort of stuff um, is linked directly to memory loss, impaired reasoning, disorientation, learning disabilities. And they're all linked with several pathologies. And these include insulin resistance, right. which, we've, which we've talked about before. Yep. Now, that's scary because insulin resistance can be caused by rather innocuous things. Now, we talked about sucralose about a month ago. Yeah. Um, so, you know, that has now all of a sudden become a risk factor for Alzheimer's. Now, I'm making a big link there. Sure. And you're going to get hate mail saying, oh, I can take sucralose, I haven't got Alzheimer's. Correct. But it's a risk factor. Yeah, yeah. It doesn't know, mean you'll definitely get it. But if you go from a 1% factor. chance of having Alzheimer's, Correct. you might go to a 2 or a 3 or a 4. Who knows, right? Yep, absolutely. So, I mean, we, again, for people who care about this sort of stuff. Yeah. Limit limit the use. Yeah. Now, now insulin resistance in type 2 diabetes means that basically the body's insulin doesn't work as much anymore. It's resistant. And in other words, it can't get sugar into the cell. So it builds up in the blood and you measure the blood levels of glucose and you've got diabetes. Now, I think most people understand that about yeah. type 2. So the best ways to overcome that is, number one, diet, limiting the amount of refined sugars, correct? Yep. yep. And, and therefore putting less of burden on the insulin that you produce. Where is insulin produced, Steve? Is it in the, the pancreas? pancreas? the beta cells. Yep. There's four different type of cells in the pancreas. Yep. I'll put up three. <laughs> <laughs> and you there's call yourself types. a research scientist, right? <laughs> oh, my gosh. <laughs> There's four types of alpha, beta, gamma, all that stuff. But, but it's the beta cells. Right. Steve. Yes. You know what I like to do before I work out? What? I like to amp it. Oh, you amp it, eh? I do. I like and I do amp. that with amperage. Amperage. Mm. Love it. So 100% on. actives in amperage. Is it, Steve? 100%. No fillers. No, no, like filling in little sections here, 100% active. And apparently it's keto friendly as well. And what's interesting is that it's considered to be, or it's claimed to be a pre-workout oil. Yeah, a pre-workout oil, which is, which is amazing because yeah. you don't hear of them very commonly, do you? No, well, it's different. And look, I, I guess the funny thing is with AMP is that, uh, being serious, because I know that was very cliche, guys, and I apologize, but I, I find doing ads and that this, you know, Get in now and buy our new amperage today. You know, it's like, no, no, thanks. But 
when we originally came up with this product, we wanted to do something completely different, and mm-hmm. we wanted to provide something that would be good for keto. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, good for, but it's not just for keto. It can be used by, you know, athletes. I used it before I used to play uh, football, mm-hmm. so I'd use it be- for s- before soccer. Other people mm-hmm. use it before weights. Mm-hmm. Some, a lot of people use it. And I think the most popular is using it first thing in the morning before fasted cardio. Yes. Um, now it's interesting, and again, we can't make uh, a lot of claims and nope. and we don't no nope. um so we just say that the product speaks for itself it does um so give it a try i mean if you're looking for something that's non-stim that doesn't have caffeine that um 100 percent natural too it, it is well there's cla in there steve um there's there's obviously peppermint, peppermint. in there as well too that's very um, good yeah there's some great and and then they've got some interesting benefits but again because we want to be good boy scouts we do we um, we're not going to say anything about what the product does other than it does something. Look into it yourself. <laughs> anyway. Yep. Thanks, Steve. No worries. Thank you. I did uh, you said a more a very correct statement before about oh. type 2 diabetes. We'll just start on diet to start with because... Steve, you can throw compliments at me all day. Well, I'm going to throw a study at you from 1983. Okay. Now, I had a mullet back in 983. That's how long ago it was. Yeah. You know, 983. Now, now remember, type 2 diabetics, they, they're usually treated with medication. Oh, the best thing is lifestyle, okay? Of course. But, Ex- exercise is well yeah. too. Super, super important, right? Yeah. So to help drive that nutrients yeah. inside the muscle cell. Correct. Right? Now, it opens up the sticky door, right? Yeah, correct. So, yeah. It opens up, it actually opens up the back door. The, uh, it opens up a, um, we're allowed to say the back door now. There's another door to the cell. Right. You can, you can insulin knocks on the front door yep. and exercise via AMP, adenosine monophosphate, opens up the back door mm. to allow the sugar in without insulin being okay. part of it. What happens if both doors are open at the same time? Does it just go through? <laughs> I'm, just, <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. <laughs> the other. Absolutely. So, so there's this, but, but what, what I'm going to typically say, and I'll, I'll offend someone here, but usually the type two diabetes. Steve, yeah, you've been offending people I, since we first did I our know, first I podcast. Know. And, and I'm going to every time you just sitting there offends people. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Well, I'm going to offend some people because usually the type two diabetics that I've treated in the past, they are usually around sixty. They're middle aged men usually. They're usually overweight. No one's offended so far. No, no. Are they white men? Because they no, are white no, men. Well, no one gives a crap. Actually, Africans are much higher risk of type two diabetes. Is you that can't, say that. can't say that. Okay. No. Damn. Now, what about First Nations people? Can no. I say that? No. no, 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 no. It just stops talking. Because that they're, they're high risk of diabetes. Why? Uh, because they contain a thrifty gene in their genetic makeup. Interesting. Which makes them more uh, adaptable to uh, fasting or missing out on foods or hunts. They're right. closer to hunter-gatherer genes. Than right. the- which, which is an awesome thing. I mean, yeah, obviously the diversity in populations as well too. It's mm. funny because I know that some people are more susceptible to alcohol as well yes. too, and it affects them harder. It's like you can get two people and you see the, the Scottish, right? They just seem to drink yep. and, and, and never get drunk, whereas you get other people one pot screamers yeah. and it just comes down to genetic makeup it does. and you know how, how you handle different poisons toxins yeah absolutely you, things in your system yeah absolutely so so anyway so so the typical 60 year old white um obese man with the big gut yep. who doesn't exercise because yep. they've got a sore back they've got a sore leg and this is this is my typical patient this is what most common thing is they typically don't exercise okay yeah, yeah. now if they continue to um, you know, take medication, they get in their 70s. The last line of defense to treat type 2 diabetes is insulin. So they actually end up having to go back on insulin to reduce blood sugar levels. Right. You can't have sugar levels too high in the blood. It's yeah. extremely toxic. Mm. It's extremely toxic. Mm. So it's, it's got to be below six. So the last action is they give them insulin. Now, so, so there was a study in 1983, as I said, where they took these really sick, obese, insulin-dependent type 2 diabetics because they've, they've gone really, really lean. And they gave them a high protein, low calorie diet, okay? Now this was published and I'll read the title out. Uh, a hypocaloric, high protein diet as primary therapy for adults with obesity related diabetes, effective long-term use in a community hospital. And what, what, what Fitz did, who was the, the lead author on this, was he took these really um, sick people with type two diabetes and he gave them this very low carbohydrate, high protein diet, about two grams per kilogram of protein, which is, you know, nice, decent side of hospital. And they actually managed to wean them off insulin. Wow. Yeah. Now, guess how long it took? Oh. On average. I'm probably going to, by the looks of it, I think you're going to say it's probably quite a short period of time, but I was going to say maybe six months, Steve. Six months, a little bit less. Wow. How long? 1.9 days. (laughs) 
<laughs> wow. <laughs> I know you don't believe me. I'm going to show it to you. The average of 1.9 days. See the highlight a bit though. Yeah, we yeah. weaned them off insulin. Wow. So that's how quickly you can reverse the severe effects of diabetes. Let food be if your medicine well. and medicine be your food. There was no exercise involved this in this. With, you know, yep. modern medicine as well too, the yep. Hippocratic Oath, right? We've got to get back yep. to that. Yep. Um, and they gradually added the carbohydrates back up to 80 grams a day. And what they found, that at the end of the trial, and they, they, they waited um, almost a year, 41 weeks, so close to a year, and only eight patients, 22%, required insulin at that point. So it basically four-fifths of the individuals that were insulin diabetic remained insulin-free mm. after almost a year. So it was pretty much permanently, and, and the conclusion was interesting. Um, it said, um, um, thus this hypocaloric, high-protein diet thus appears to be generally successful means of weaning obese diabetic adult patients from insulin. It can be done rapidly, safely, and permanently in the community. Wow. So did it give a breakdown, sorry, did you say, Steve, in terms of the amount of protein to the amount of fats to the amount of, of uh, carbohydrates? And did it mention sugar levels in there at all? Yeah, they, right. they, they actually managed to, because um, they put them in hospital, these people, for four days just to monitor them very closely. Sure, sure. Because it's the 80s. Of course. Th this diet was, was like an Atkins Radical, diet. yeah. Yeah, it was like... Nowadays, you know, if I mention that to um, most nutritionists, they go, oh, well, of course we give them low-carbohydrate diets. But in the 80s, it was very radical to do that, and that's why this paper is in 83. Yeah, yeah. Now, you know, my father-in-law, Dr. Doug, he in the 80s figured out that he said, when I put them on the diabetes diet, they got worse. And so he, he figured out that the carbohydrates are turning into sugar in the body, and we just take them off all sugars and carbohydrates like this diet, and the diabetes would resolve. Yeah, right. So... You know, that's how powerful a diet is. Now, we're not mentioning exercise, and, and we should, because di sure. exercise is important. But these were people in hospital. Yeah, they so they couldn't exercise. Couldn't exercise. And in 1.9 days, they were weaned from insulin. Wow. Yeah, Steve, I know. that's incredible. Uh, incredible. So that's where it all started when, when people could treat the, the type 2 diabetes, the severe type 2 diabetics. So, I mean, that's radical as far as I'm concerned. And, and again, we know, Steve, you incorporate, you know, even basic ba mm. weight-bearing exercise, even yeah. walking is, is yeah. going to help. I mean, the, the largest, I guess, is it glute forward? What are the transporters? Glute forward yeah. transporters, yeah. You know, like if you if you look at your glutes. <laughs> yes. The glute, glute forward in your glutes, right? Yeah. But, I mean, huge muscle, muscle yep. mass right there, quads, hamstrings. You know, even going for a walk, um, you know, if you, even if you're really overweight and really mm. unfit, just a straight walk is a good place to start. Correct. Then maybe a bit of an incline on a hill, maybe even doing a few bodyweight squats. Yep. It's funny, Steve, you know, obviously we're working on this new yeah. program, which I'm really excited about, which yeah. we've got some interest. In. And again, this is the sort of stuff that's designed to help people wherever they are to start demystifying mm. and, and, and helping people to become more, how would you say, um, open to and creating a framework for people to exercise and eat well. And it's not that difficult. And no. what I want to say as well too, it's progress, not perfection. It's Correct. not about you being, you know, going from being Mr. or Mrs. Joe average yeah. to being, you know, Arnold Schwarzenegger on stage, mm -hmm. ripped and it's not, it's not that. It's not difficult. Not at all. And, and the, another reason why we have to get the sugar levels down. So that's why they resort to insulin in the 83 paper. But, but, You've got to get the sugar levels. You can't just ignore this mm. um, because if you get too much sugar floating around your bloodstream, you form these things called advanced glycosylated end products or AGEs, you know, A-G-E-S. And so that's – they're very dangerous. Glycosylated, is that a form of glucose? Yes. It's when um, your um, red blood cells get glucose stuck to them. Oh, and yeah, and it just sticks to them. So, and, and is this also why the eyes are damaged with Correct. regards to it? Because the, the obviously the eyes are probably very sensitive, and mm -hmm. the and the micro capillaries, the micro capillaries, capillaries, yeah, uh, are very very um, you know sensitive, and yep, obviously it affects the the optic nerve. Correct, it does yeah. It affects diabetes affects four tissues mainly, and the first one is as you correctly point out the blood vessels. Mm -hmm. So it affects blood vessels, especially the smaller blood vessels in the body. Mm. So they're like in the eye. And then you get the extremities affected, and that's why you lose limbs. Yes, and that extremity. Oh, yeah. Well, so I mean, that's like serious. People might not care about going blind. But no. If they can't perform. That's right. That might be enough to get you off your ass and <laughs> exercising and eating better. <laughs> well, what I love is is nowadays it's like, why can't you perform? Oh, it's my diabetes. So I just won't treat the diabetes. I'll just get some Viagra or something. <laughs> you know, it doesn't make any sense whatsoever. Mm. Because if your blood vessels are being affected there, and they are, mm. they're affected in the eyes, and you start losing limbs, especially feet. What happens when you take Viagra, Steve? 
Viagra. It's nitric oxide. Yeah, well, it, it, there's an enzyme that breaks down nitric oxide, so you don't get an erection for hours, right? Right. Well, I do, but no one else does. <laughs> 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 what do you mean you do? <laughs> no, nah, well, you, you can't. So so you've got this enzyme that's in your penis. Right. And it breaks down this nitric oxide, which, you know, causes you to become flaccid again. I don't even know if I want to make eye contact. <laughs> oh, all right. I'll, going, I'll, 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 I'm sorry. I'm just I'll not that the camera. No, no. Okay, so, so, <laughs> so, so, all right. So, so but what this, this Viagra does is, is it inhibits that enzyme. Right. So the nitric oxide builds up in the penis. Right. So you get massive vasodilation in the, yeah. in the penis, which yeah. squats off the capillaries that return the blood to the body. Right. So it fills up with blood and stays full. Yeah. That's what an erection is. Okay. So that's how Viagra works. And Cialis works that way too. And Levitra, which are other drugs. Just, and again, discovered by accident. Just interesting. Yeah. Obviously. Viagra is an interesting discovery. Yeah, it was <sighs> going to be anti-hypertensive. Yeah, yeah. Um, so they sent it out to all these old fat people that had high blood pressure. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and then they asked work. for it back, right? Yeah, they asked and for it back because it didn't work because the blood pressure didn't go down. They didn't send it back because they said, oh, it's helping my old fella. Um, and so I went, oh, okay. Yeah. And so Because typically when you get a bit older, you have a bit of problems in those areas, Steve? Yeah, well, I, I'd know. Not I'm you, old. but other people. <laughs> yeah, other people. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> other people. Yeah, yeah. You know. uh, but yeah, of course, because the blood vessels become damaged over time. Ah. Um, so that our blood, our blood vessels, you know, we, we worry about the ones in our heart. Yeah. And so the blood vessels that feed our heart get damaged. We call that atherosclerosis or heart right. disease. Right. So it gets damaged throughout the entire body. Right. So quite Interesting. bad. Interesting. Yeah. Okay. So there's inside the blood vessel, you've got this endothelium, mm. and that's damaged by higher blood sugar levels as well. Right. So, you know, you get massive artery disease, like heart attacks if you're yeah, type yeah, 2 diabetes. Yeah, yeah. Type 2 diabetes doesn't just can drive Alzheimer's, it can drive heart disease, uh, of course, loss of limb, uh, loss of sex, um, libido, all this sort That's of stuff. That's the worst of all Obesity, of yeah. yeah. Also, it pretty makes everything worse. It also increases the C word. Right. Cancer. Badly. We yes. can say it. We can say it. We can say yeah. it because the food for uh, cancer is sugar. Yeah. Um, the sugar cells pretty much feed exclusively off um, glucose. They discovered that in 1929. Yeah. By a guy called Wahlberg, not Mark Wahlberg, um, but... His great-grandfather. Yeah, his great-great-grandfather. Yeah. And they call it the Wahlberg effect, if you want to Google that. Yeah. And that, that's where the, yeah, the his cancer... Name is, uh, Sharky Shark, I think. Sh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, you know when you have a PET scan to see whether you've got cancer cells not in your body? Yeah. They tell you to fast, and yeah. then they fill you up with all this sugar. Yeah. So as the sugar gets straight to the cancer cells, and they radioactive the sugar... So you can find out where the cancer cells are. That's how really? bad wow. sugar is for cancer. Wow. So you know, like I don't. You oh, know, I know. I know. With people that have got cancer, the, you know, the first thing I say, you know, yep. obviously, you know, if it was me, mm. cut sugar out. Cut sugar and alcohol out immediately. Immediately. And of the two, they're both terrible. But yeah. um, sugar is sugar. It's horrendous. Evil. So, so diabetes one, two, and three is a buildup of sugar, which is a real problem. So, tell me more about diabetes three. Yeah, sure. And, and obviously the impact on the brain. So, Alzheimer's. Yep. Yep. So, so the, the mechanisms are interesting um, because the, the 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 interplay between Alzheimer's and this is a published another paper um, called you're going to love this one. It's called Alzheimer's disease and type three diabetes: common pathological mechanisms between Alzheimer's disease and type. Two diabetes. I do love that one. Yeah, it's got it's got all it just. I went, ooh, I've got to get that paper. And now it's published. <laughs> Boss excited. So it's, you know what, Steve? When you were putting on your Burton Ernie shirt this morning, like you know, <laughs> Burt gave me a call and said he wants his shirt back. By the way, yeah, yeah, um, it's good. Yeah, but yeah, it, it is it is a nice Sesame Street shirt. But no, no, I bet you do get excited by. I do stuff like that. Yeah. And this was published uh, February uh, two thousand twenty-two. So really, really, and, and what what they found Richard is ben, that I should read that paper. Yeah, it just covers everything off. It's, I've, I've highlighted almost every part chew, of it. Q twenty two. Yes, Q for twenty two. So, so what happens is is that that Alzheimer's and type two diabetes are interlinked with insulin resistance, mm -hmm. neuroinflammation. So you actually get inflammation of the nerves because there's too much sugar there, and the sugar damages the nerves in your body too, including your brain, where you get this inflammation going on because of the sugar attaching to the proteins and everything throughout your brain and everything, because sugar sticks to everything. But that's got to lead to, mm, uh, geez, what brain, what what, in, what what things could it not lead to potentially? Oh. Irritability, yep. brain fog, yep. uh, insomnia, yep. um, panic, yep. panic disorders. Mitochondrial dysfunction. In the right. brain, yeah. so so you your mitochondria, the energy levels in your brain just drop, 
So it's just terrible. Cognitive issues. Cognitive dysfunction. And then, of course, Alzheimer's disease because you get a buildup of plaques in there (gasps) because it's the insulin that actually helps get rid of the plaques out of the brain. Right. So if insulin's not working... So would this... Would this be the main cause, the only cause, or uh, just one of the causes? One of the causes right. of Alzheimer's. Do you, do you have an estimate, or does they have any information on what percentage they think is caused by this? They think it's 30 to 40%. Wow. Yeah. Now, that's interesting because you've got to remember, I'll give you some figures here from this paper. In America, so you divide this by about 10 to Australia, but there's 5.8 million Americans age 65, so about half a million Australians right now have Alzheimer's disease diagnosed. Wow. So that's huge. Yeah. Uh, it's going to double by um, the mid-century. So it's just, it's just exploding. So Why? Because of the type 2 diabetes. Because exploding. our diets... And this is the funny thing, yeah. and this is part of the reason why we're doing the 12-week challenge, Steve. Mm. <sighs> we're, bit, we're smarter as a human race than we we've ever been. Yeah. But we know more now than we've ever known. We do. Like we've got, you know, the electron microscope. Oh, <laughs> I mean, we've got a few years ago. Yeah, but that's an amazing thing. But we've thing. got the internet. I mean, we've got breakthroughs. We've yep. got discoveries. We've got all this sort of stuff. Yeah. But yet we're becoming fatter yeah. and dumber. We are living in the movie Idiocracy. We really are. Yeah. And they talk about shutting down misinformation. <laughs> but... Oh, but not where it comes to health. In fact, good information is told when good is called evil and evil is called good, Steve, you know that you've got a problem, right? Yeah. But why? I mean, I, I think I kind of know why. My yeah. conspiratorial theory, yeah. yeah, tinfoil hat wearing view, right? But there's a lot of people wearing tinfoil hats with me, Steve. Um, but I think at the end of the day... Um, there's so much information overload. If mm. I want to take the mainstream out, there's so much information over there and there's so many people saying so many things mm-hmm. that people are getting confused. But there doesn't really seem to be too much confusion around here. Is it that people are lazy? Is it mm-hmm. that the convenience factor has become so great that mm-hmm. we are convenience driven to the point of death? That's um, true. I, I just don't know. I mean, I'm... Well, um, let's say you wanted to get some food nowadays. Yep. McDonald's, uh, the Golden Arches. Yeah, and worse still, do you have to walk there? No, I drive it in my car. Or who breeds it? Oh, I don't even have to walk down to my car. You, I call someone and they bring it to me. Call someone or you've got an app that just tick click it with your little thumb, you move the little I've, thumb I've, muscle. I've got, a, uh, I've got a new service that I'm going to put out to Uber. I'm going to call it Uber Feeds. Yeah. So that you can keep working and someone actually spoon feeds them. And <laughs> just, yep, I'll have uh, this and they deliver it and then they spoon feed it to you, Steve. It reminds you of Homer Simpson when he, um, yeah, yeah, when he, when he, when he went to the old age home because they thought he was really old and he, and he was eating his meal and he goes, and, well, what's Harry? I tell me, oh, he's hooked up to an IV or na- nasogastric feeding. Oh, and here I am chewing, chewing like, like a an sucker. Idiot. Yeah. So he ch- it's the one where he goes, well, I, think I, got a, I think I've got an electric wheelchair and here I am using my legs like a sucker. Yeah, that's <laughs> I right. Like, I remember that. Yeah. So, so, I mean, but this is what's happening. I mean, you know, like, I mean, there's no activity. I mean, it, it's, it's, it's really, um, look, we are smarter, but we are also doing things that are really counterintuitive to our health. Yeah. They're great for our lifestyle. They're great for convenience. I mean, you know, I've never, I've, I've actually never got Uber Eats in my life. I have. Yeah, I know. I mean, it's Don't not, judge me for it, Steve. No, no, look, it's, it's not, I, I can see, I can see why people get it. Mm-hmm. But, but if you're going to do that, yeah. try and balance your life out with some sort of wow. exercise. Look, and Steve, I am the last person to judge. Last mm. two years for me, I've been beaten up so yeah. bad, you know, just with, with, with stuff going on. Mm. And uh, I'm not the only person. Mm. In fact, I've had it pretty good compared to a lot of people, right, mm. with, you know, the, the great reset and the great lockdown and the great, mm. you know, everything that's gone on. Yeah. Um, and so you get out of good habits you You get and and that's the thing nobody's here to judge it's just all about information and then providing a way forward for people to be able to change their lifestyle correct if people are armed with accurate information steve which hopefully we're doing in the podcast then they can you know what i'm going to take on what steve said and i'm gonna i'm gonna change my lifestyle and if it's just one thing yeah, every day exactly. at a time, just one thing. Start there, and then just see what happens. Well, uh, hopefully, what what I mean, type three diabetes is is interesting because the reason why I like it so much is because like my my grandmother uh, died of Alzheimer's, and right. you know everyone's got a, probably a grandparent to do that. She she got it terrible towards the end of her life. She was right. she decayed, you know, over ten years. It was yeah. horrific. Yeah. Um, to, to watch her 
you know, slowly lose it from, you know, I remember as a 16 year old going around to her place and she came running out, I was with my mother and they said, that, and she just remember her yelling, this, there's a fire on the wall, those words exactly. Wow. She was horrified. And I didn't know about, you know, Alzheimer's or dementia back then. Yeah. And it's like, what is, what's going on? So running in there expecting a fire, but it was one of those old strip heaters oh, yeah. that was on the wall and it was on, and it was glowing red. So she somehow mistook that as a fire on the wall. And that was the start of the, the first time I noticed that she was getting, you know, not just old forgetting things, but getting dementia and getting Alzheimer's disease. And she got diagnosed with Alzheimer's. So it was, it was a slow decay after that. You know, it was just, it, it's a terrible way to go. And, and the beauty about this sort of research is that in the past it was like, oh, I hope I don't get Alzheimer's. And that's a, but now we can say, hey, this is, some, this is one thing I can do to protect me myself from getting Alzheimer's. Well, up to one third. Yes. R reduce your one risk third. by potentially up to one third, one third, Steve, which is, and again, reduce the sugar yep. and exercise. Absolutely. Yeah. Is it's, there anything else, Steve, in terms of, okay, cognitive brain function, maybe yep. someone that's had a, a life of eating sugar and, yeah. and, and no exercise and, mm. you know, very poor. Outside of, which is the best thing you can do, mm. prevention is worth a pound of cure. Mm. What can you do to potentially, is there any ingredients, you know, I'm thinking things like polyphenols from pomegranate, yeah. which I know are really powerful They're for good. cleaning arteries and mm. cleaning, you know, um, yep. the blood. Yep. Uh, is there anything that you know of that people could do to incorporate into their diets? Well, there is. I mean, just simple things. For starters, you can things like, like adding cinnamon as a cinnamon. Spice. That's very good. Yeah. Very potent. Because that helps with insulin sensitivity. It right? does, yeah. Yeah. So, so beside the diet and exercise, which- What is it in cinnamon, Steve? Uh, there's the cinnamicides, which is, uh, yeah, it, which, which just helps sensitize insulin. So if you're gonna have a donut, have a cinnamon donut. Oh, <laughs> oh no, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> I know that's, why, so why that's I what thinking, Steve said. Yeah, yeah, that's what I said. Yeah. Why, why was I thinking protein shake have some cinnamon in it? But no, 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 cinnamon donuts. Oh, God, as a kid, I used to eat lots of them. Cinnamon donuts? Oh, Southland Shopping Center. It was just like the treat, the, the end all treats. And I still called them treats. Oh, I, I love cinnamon. I actually yeah. used to get the cinnamon toffee with yeah. chocolate, dark chocolate on it. I used to scarf those things and I didn't realize I was being so healthy. No, I'm just joking, <laughs> Steve. Well, but yeah. you know. And that's, and that's kind of what people think. But cinnamon, okay, so yeah. cinnamon's really cool. So you can Very add cinnamon to things. Um, th Cinnamon on your coffee is pretty cool. It is. Yeah. And uh, uh, coffee is very like, good for diabetes as well. Is like, it? It's protecting against it. Yeah. Really? Yeah, very much so. Oh. And caffeine as well is, okay. is very good too. So they're, they're all good things. Okay. Uh, caffeine protects against Alzheimer's disease too. Really? It does, yeah. Huh. I should be, <laughs> I should be bulletproof then. Well, yeah. I mean, there, there's lots of herbs you can go into too. There's, there's, there's a myriad of them, which is another. But berberine containing herbs are very good too. Yep. Berberine changes the mi microbiome to increase acomansia. Oh, and that's how goat's rue works. And goat's rue, when that's it's right. refined, turns into a drug called metformin, mm. which is probably the most type two, common type 2 diabetic medication. Yep. So it's an extract of goat's rue. It's been changed a bit, but it's go through sure. the herb. So go through is a good herb too as well. Cool. Um, but there's loads of herbs you can do. You know, the, the, the gynostemmas and these sorts of things are very good too. Um, you know, there's there's absolutely um, a myriad of herbs. Um, Sanephrine from um, bitter orange is good mm -hmm. too. That helps metabolize sugars. Mm -hmm. I mean, this is outside of diet and exercise too, as I've said sure. before. Uh, chromium, the mineral, chromium yeah. nicotinate is probably the most powerful one. Uh, and that's a simple... Nicotinate, polynicotinate. Well, I mean, Steve, do you have a, have a preference? No, I don't, because no. The, the chromium itself is the better one. But with the nicotinic acid in it, the, the nicotinate, that forms glucose tolerance factor, GTF, which helps get sugar into the cells And what as is well. picolinate? Sorry? Do you know what chromium picolinate is? Yeah, pic picolinate. Yeah, yeah I've like, Picolinate, whatever. Picolinate, that, that's a yeah. form of chromium, and I don't know if it's allowed in Australia, oh. but it's a highly absorbable one mm -hmm. where chromium binds with picolinic acid, mm -hmm. which is an acid secreted by the pancreas. There you go. Yeah, so it's very well absorbed chromium. Okay. Chromium nicotinate is a good one because it's very good specifically for sugars. Right. About 400 micrograms is a good dose a day. So that's a really cheap, simple supplement yeah. on top of your diet and yeah. top of your exercise. Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, remember diet alone, we've shown can do a heck of a lot. Oh, and look, everybody who's yeah. listening to this, if you've got you know, type two, type three diabetes, yep. number yep. one, start with your food, yep. start with your diet. And there are also other herbs you can use, which is not really ones you associate with diabetes. Remember the side effect of sugar in the brain, too much sugar in the brain is neuroinflammation. Yeah. Now there are herbs that reduce inflammation in the brain. Oh, which ones? Oh, like ginger, turmeric, boswellia. 
Wow. And they're three of my favorites. I mean, it's well, yeah. brilliant. I mean, and to be honest, I probably use those three things every day. So, yeah. yeah. Well, you should. They're, they're great herbs for those sorts of things. Um, and then you've got the gut gut herbs, anything that works in the gut to increase acumenia. Yeah. I mean, exercise increases acumenia. Sure. But the herbs like um, the goat through increases acumenia. Berberine containing herbs, so golden seal. Wow. which is Hydrastis canadensis, is a very good herb for increasing berberine in the gut, uh, increasing acomansia in the gut. And acomansia is, if you look at all your sports stars, that's yeah. what they've got because it also feeds on carbon. Loves Super carbon. high in supreme athletes. I won't yep. mention names, but I've seen gut reports of professional athletes and their acomansia is through the roof. Really? Yeah. So, so you've got to look at it from a multifactual point of view. And also the ages, remember I talked about the advanced glycosylated end products, they form free radicals. So any antioxidants are good. So along with your healthy diabetes, high protein diet, you're having loads of vegetables, fruits, and salads. Yet I know a broken record time, but those things are good because they're antioxidants. Yeah. And they're good for everything else too. They're going to protect you against all sorts of illnesses. Yeah. But they're really good as well. Yeah. So so there's loads and loads of things we can do on top of this. Now, now when it comes to exercise, there there is a good time to exercise to burn sugars. Remember, diabetes is um is often diagnosed first thing in the morning yep. when you have a fasting blood test and your sugar levels are high. So people say to me, well, how are blood sugar levels high first thing in the morning? And that's simply because overnight you've been making sugar by your liver. So funny, Steve, because yeah. I, I, I hate social media. I think most people out there are freaking idiots. Even Twitter? And, <laughs> and um one size does not suit all. And yeah. I really like the, the caveat that you have around about exercise is that the best time to do exercise yeah. is the time that you do exercise. Yes, it is. It is. But, I mean, if you want to get down to tin tacks and if you want to look at the absolute best time to exercise, I saw this this trainer say, like, a, it's a dirty word talking about fasted cardio. And I'm oh, like, is it? really? Why? Because they're only looking at it, I think, from one dimension, which is oh. potentially the impact on fat loss. Now, Steve, my understanding is, and I'm not an expert here, mm. that fasted cardio is very good for actually helping with the very, weight line and burning body fat. Very good. But you were going to mention that doing exercise first thing in the morning is also really good for people with diabetes. Correct. That's because when you, because you're burning sugar up level, sugar. Yeah, and that's when your sugar levels are weirdly at their peak. Yeah. Now, we've heard of insulin resistance in the brain, which is type 3 diabetes. Yeah, yeah. You can get insulin resistance in the muscles we talked about before with the GLUT4 transporters. There's another transporter called GLUT2 two, transporters, yeah. and they're in the liver. Right. So what happens is they, they become resistant to insulin too. So insulin is floating around your body in super high amounts, but it's not working, and that's insulin resistance. And it can't get sugar into the cell. So the poor old liver is sitting there going, hey, guys, there's no sugar in the blood because there's no sugar in the liver. Mm. So I guess what the liver does. It makes sugar. Yep. And it makes sugar overnight. So as you've got sugar. But it, it mistakenly makes the sugar because you're insulin resistant. Uh -huh. It believes you've got no sugar in the blood. Mm. So it makes it. And so you wake up with all this sugar and you've catabolized all your muscle overnight in the process. It's made it from your muscle. Shit, shit process. And so, you, you know, the right up cortisol goes high in the morning and the cortisol levels also make, make sugar as well. So you've got to burn this off. And you've got high cortisol in the morning for a reason, so you can hunt and gather your food. Why don't you just exercise? Same thing. Now, you know, I, I agree with you. You should exercise whenever you can. But once you're starting to get into the type 2 and type 3 area, you've got to actually make a bit more of an effort. I can't remember who said it. I think it was Thomas Jefferson. And again, this is the wisdom in the ages. But he used to recommend, I think... Could be wrong. A brisk 30-minute walk every morning before effectively you do anything yeah. because he believed that it helped with cognitive function. It does too. Yeah. That's the side effect of it. It helps your brain. Which is interesting because now I think science is sort of patching up. Okay, well, if you've got too much sugar floating around and, you know. Oh, it's terrible for your brain. Mm. It causes literally Alzheimer's disease, yeah. the worst brain disease. So there's a combination between needing enough sugar for your brain to function yeah. but having too much, which is obviously going to cause problems. Yeah, and, and you, you, you do need sugar in your brain, but you can't get sugar in your brain if it's insulin resistant. Yeah. So that's where you get cognitive function, you get mitochondrial dysfunction according to the papers, and all this, your brain actually, you might have high blood sugar levels, but it doesn't get into the brain cells. Mm. And that's type 3 diabetes wow. in a nutshell. Yeah. And, and that's a horrific scenario because, you know, Alzheimer's, once you get it, the brain shrinks. You know, if you've ever seen an MRI of someone with Alzheimer's disease, yeah. their brain has literally shrunk, the really? ventricles. Yeah, where the, and especially the hippocampus. Which is the part of the brain that forms new memories. Wow. So, you know, you can't form new memories. Can you reverse it? Uh, not yet. The brain shrinkage, no. no. But if you've got type 3 diabetes and you're starting to get it, 
And or even if you've got type 2 diabetes, which gives you a much higher risk of type 3 diabetes, you can reverse that. Right. No question. Right. People, I've done it myself with, with people in clinic, they have gone off all medications. But these are the serious people. You gotta to remember to get to type two diabetes, you have to have a lot of years of inactivity and unfortunately poor eating. Right. And that habit is hard to break. Right. A, a small percentage will go, no, I don't wanna get type two diabetes. I don't start taking tablets, blah, 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 blah. And they exercise and eat well and the diabetes goes away. Like that paper said in 1983, that's 40 years ago, they learnt about this. Um, and it's been, you know, more, I just got the old paper because I thought that that's the original one where they found it. But they weaned them off insulin in, in under two days. It wasn't two, it wasn't six months or thing. It was a very quick treatment. Because, you you know, once your blood sugar levels drop when you're not eating all the sugar, all carbohydrates which turn into sugar, that you've, the, the, the amount of insulin activity you've got actually works because it, there's enough sugar. It, it, it can handle the amount of sugar you're eating. Mm. It's as simple as that. It's not actually rocket science. Yeah. So, so, you know, by, by actually um, getting rid of the sugars out of the blood by not eating them in the first place is the best treatment. Unfortunately, there's still recommendations out there where you, you're supposed to have high carbohydrate, lots of flour in your diet. And um, there was a movie, and is it called Fat Fiction? What was it called? Fat Fiction, yeah, which, which highlighted this about a year ago. And they, they, they went through it in, in detail. And, and in America, finally, when they were making the movie in 2001, 2000, sorry, 2021, they said, oh, yes, the Diabetes Association have just changed it and said, yes, you can eat less sugar now and less flour in your diet. So, so my advice for someone who's, say, you know, you know, if you're overweight, and particularly around the waist, uh, do something about it before you get type 2 and, worst of all, di type 3 diabetes mm -hmm. and, and, and start making your own changes. Mm. Try not to even, you know, you, you, sure, check with your doctor about exercising, that sort of thing, but become self-responsible. Don't go to the doctor with your hand out and say, give me a script for my high blood sugar levels. Say, hey, give me a script in a month if I can't do it myself by getting up and going for that morning walk or whatever exercise you want to do. It really doesn't matter. And you're going to eat less crap in your diet. Oh, we've always said it, Steve. Yeah. Modern medicine is fantastic if you have an acute issue or something Correct. that you need to arrest quickly. Hmm. But if you've got an integrated doctor that hmm. can actually help you to understand that in isolation, diet and exercise, along with, you know, potentially the wisdom of the ages around herbs and other foods, yep. and then utilizing modern medicine as well too to bridge gaps where you need to. Mm. <laughs> it's not rocket science to me, no. Steve. I no. mean, it really isn't. But unfortunately, you mm. know, people are taught one thing mm. that, and this is the only way to go forward, and everything else doesn't work. And it just seems so counterintuitive and incredibly um, limiting. It does. And, and, and what we know about Alzheimer's is you get these plaques in your brain called beta amyloid plaques. We now know, and I'll, I'll read this paper out, which, which talked about it. Insulin resistance exacerbates Alzheimer's disease via multiple mechanisms. And so that was published 2021. So the, one of the mechanisms is those ages we're talking about, the high blood sugar levels, drives up amyloid plaques in the brain. Mm. So if you've got, if you're eating a lot of sugar, and you're putting a lot of sugar in your body, like whether it be bread or pasta or cereal and that sort of thing, be aware that you will get a high blood sugar level, which will give you high ages, which can lead to plaques in your brain. That's how serious it is. Yeah. I'm not over-egging it. That is exactly what the literature is saying. And you've got to be absolutely careful. You don't want your plaques in your brain because that just drives Alzheimer's disease. No, it's, it's scary. I mean, I, I see that as a good, uh, like good research because you can change that. Mm. People, you know, we know there's a gene called the apolipoprotein E4 gene, which gives you, I don't know, long name, sorry that. about that one. Yeah, yeah, everyone knows it. And that gene gives you a higher risk factor. This actually causes it. So, you know, you might say, oh, it runs in the family. Well, so you start running in the family so you can burn your sugar so you don't get the Alzheimer's. You know, that's what we need to, to, to watch out for here. Now, it's very interesting, isn't it? Very interesting. Well, as I said, Matt and I were both like type 3 diabetes. What is that? Well, you've given us the lowdown, Steve. Yeah, I it's think interesting. you've given us some, not only understanding of what it is and how it affects us, but potentially how we can we can mitigate yeah. you know, any of those things. So That's what um, I like about yeah, it. Any of those potential, you know, developing. Yeah. Um, thanks, Steve. Yeah, it was um, good. Yeah, I appreciate that one. Nice, nice quick one today. But yeah, we'll be back with some more next week. Can't wait. All right, thanks. See Bye. you next week.